Well, let me tell you these guys, if we carry on this way, we get nowhere, but honest, eh? Uh, first of all, we just managed to get to the next stage of the European Conference League, with some luck. We missed out on getting Victor Osimhen to Chelsea. And finally, against Crystal Palace, we stumbled again. We were playing so well in the first half. We totally lost the plot in the second half, allowing Crystal Palace to equalize and almost defeat us. Now, without a decent striker, will Chelsea have a chance to do well this season? I'm asking you, from my point of view, it's going to be a massive struggle. You tell me, guys, what do you think? Welcome back, guys. Uh, welcome back to another of my videos. And uh, for, where shall I start from today? <laughs> Chelsea missing out on Victor Osimhen. Uh, or Chelsea just luckily managed to get it through a Stamford Bridge against Crystal Palace. Well, I, I, sh I will start to talk uh, about Victor Osimhen. Why? Because we've seen it uh, in a way we played Crystal Palace that Chelsea need a decent striker at all cost. Now we need to wait most probably two, three months before Chelsea will have a chance to get a striker that will change in a way our game. Because so far we can play all the beautiful tactics that Mariska wants us to play. We can learn a lot from that. But overall, after all, without having the top men up front that put the ball in net, we get nowhere. Nicholas Jackson against Crystal Palace. Yes, indeed, he scored one goal. But again, I repeat what I think about Nicholas Jackson. On four chances on target, he missed three and he scored one. And that is why John Obi Mikkel criticized him. And he didn't take well the criticism, telling John Obi Mikkel to shut up. And John Obi Mikkel, which has won to Chelsea the lot, I just want to remind Nicola Jackson, the lot replied with such a style to Nicola Jackson by saying, well, I will shut when you start scoring goals, which will never happen. The problem with Chelsea is that if against Crystal Palace in the first half, Nicola Jackson has scored two more goals, then we would have had a better clean sheet and Chelsea would have perhaps controlled the game in a better way in the second half. When you are only one goal up in any game and you struggle to only score one goal, that is called common sense, sooner or later you allow the opposition team to equalize. Therefore, should Victor Osimhen had come to Chelsea? Yes, he should have come to Chelsea. Well, if you ask me, if you ask me why Chelsea missed out on Victor Osimhen on the last day of the transfer window, I will tell you. Many say that Todd Bolle went to Naples to try to strike a deal there and he offered Osimhen £70,000 uh, a week. Well, let me tell you from my point of view, that is a lot of bullshit. Sorry if I use this word. Because what I believe Todd Bolle has offered to the player is a package that was going to be altogether uh, an amount of money an estimated £200,000 a week plus. And I'm pretty much sure about that. The reason why the deal collapsed is because of the player demands. He was asking for a lot of money. The Arabs Halali stood in the middle to try to get the signature of Victor Osimhen few hours earlier 
They didn't succeed. No, they didn't succeed. They stepped out of the race because De Laurentiis also was asking for more money. So the Alali uh, representatives say to De Laurentiis, well, we are out of the race here. You asking for the moon. So Todd Bowley tried to finalize with the player's agent a, a, a salary package that would have made Ozyman overall happy and the deal collapsed because Ozyman overall wasn't happy about what Todd Bowley was going to offer to him. For that particular reason, Naples SC is extremely furious about the behavior of the player has decided to punish the player and now Victor Ozyman is training only with under 21 and it is very unlikely that Halali will come back in the next few days with a new offer to try to sign Ozyman simply because they have already signed Ivan Tony. Now, should we start to criticize or blame Enzo Mariska tactics and Somaresca system for the reason why Chelsea is struggling and is not getting the results they need? Well, from my point of view, I would say they sh we should be careful before we blame the manager. Why? Because we have seen the progression in terms of tactics and way of playing. When Chelsea scored in the first half against Crystal Palace, there was a counter-attack. We have scored so many times in counter-attack. Why? Because con Chelsea counter-attack are so effective. Because of the way the players pass the ball. There is no more than two touches in a way they pass the ball to each other. Therefore, the game that Chelsea play is very dynamic, is very fast. Therefore, from that point of view, it will become very unpredictable for the opposition team to read Chelsea game. And that is why all of a sudden Chelsea managed to score a stunning goal with Nicola Jackson that started from Nonima Dweke galloping on a wing, passing the ball to Cole Palmer, spotted Nicola Jackson, bam, ball in the net, just like that. We have had so many chances in the first half, but again, opportunities after opportunities miss. There were two clear chances for Nicola Jackson to score again, but again, he missed opportunities again. And that is why I play Nicola Jackson. Well, let me tell you, if Chelsea had played the second half against Crystal Palace in the same way they played the first half, Chelsea would have most probably won the game. The problem is the defensive repart again struggle. And uh, we allowed uh, a player like Trevor Colba to leave. And we kept someone like Wesley Fofana. Okay, it's true, he's tr still trying to recover from the injury he had last season. But again, Fofana in a match against Crystal Palace struggled again, stumbled again. He made so many mistakes again. And we can we can carry on like this we can we need to focus more we need to wake up so there has to be a commitment to the mariska tactics system so the players should take mariska's tactics more seriously the inconsistency also muddy work and he played the previous game in such wonderful way scoring an hat trick but against crystal palace he was the ghost of himself he wasn't really effective okay he did run a lot on the wing and create so many chances but i was really expecting much more from noni muddy and when uh, really Mariska decided to bring in Ngungu, I think it was a bit too late, the last 15 minutes of the game, he replaced Noni Madiweke with Ngungu. And I think perhaps Ngungu should have started from the very first minute against Crystal Palace, it is my own, own opinion. In difficult situation, Christopher Ngungu is, has always been an important player. A player that is always uh, trying to solve problem and issue. 
Well, the game against Crystal Palace will concern me a bit was the injury of Malgusto. I mean, we noticed that after Malgusto was substituted, that the game went a bit down for Chelsea. Chelsea started to struggle, really. And this uh, uh, means and proves that Malgusto uh, is essential for Chelsea in a way he plays. And uh, we raised James still unfit. We need to find a way to uh, really find the players that can cover the position effectively. Maresca decided to replace Malgusto with Madrid, which was a bit of a gamble from my personal point of view. And in a way, the game changed overall. We all notice most, most probably that the inconsistency of Chelsea in a way they play, yet they behave. They was typical of last season, last summer again, with Pochettino is still persisting, is still there, is still an issue, an issue that Enzo Maresca must adjust. A problem that Enzo Maresca has to take it seriously uh, on board and try to resolve this problem because you can win a game 6-2 and then all of a sudden, you know, struggling so much in a way we played Crystal Palace. We could have lost against Crystal Palace today. Like we could have perhaps been kicked out of the European Conference League from Servette. We just luckily got to get to the next stage. And that was luck. Now let's talk about the arrival of Jadon Sancho to Chelsea in the last day of the transfer window. Well, uh, what surprised me is that Chelsea signed Jadon Sancho and allow a good, decent player, winger like Ramsdale, with his experience, to sign for Arsenal. Are we kidding? I mean, is there any sense in this move? I'm not a Chelsea sporting director, but commune sense, come on guys, as a supporter, was there of logical in this move? Let me tell you guys, I'm a bit worried. I'm really worried because we had nothing than players coming to Chelsea this season. We have had so many players that had to belong in the very last day of the transfer window out of the club somewhere to Strasbourg or to other clubs just for the sake of the PSR regulation because we don't need a big squad. We need to have 26 players in the squad. But is this really a stock market here? I'm wondering. What we doing? We buying player for to sell player again? Do we care about Chelsea Football Club? Do we care about the sake of this club that is so prestigious or not? I'm asking myself. I'm asking you. Do we care? Well, guys, the next match Chelsea will be playing will be on the 14th of September against the Bournemouth away. And we really need to shake up a bit here, try to get three points. Uh, we played three matches so far in Premier League. One draw, one loss and one win. Which makes four points for a prestigious team as Chelsea is. That's not good enough. That's the third, this is the third year of uh, Todd Bolly and uh, Feliciano and the Kpali hierarchy. And Chelsea is still struggling. We need to remember who we are and we need to remember where we want to get. This is not a stock market. This is not a football club where you buy a sell, buy a sell. This is not a stock market. This is a decent football team that wants to keep the prestige up there. And we want to win trophy, of course. Well, guys, there will be an international black. There will be the UEFA National League to be played. So there'll be 15 days uh, roughly for Chelsea to clarify their mind and to see where they want to get to. And to make sure they have an objective to do well at the win matches. Because apart from Mariska tactics and system, 
we need to have a better attitude to win games and that is in there in a box not just the tactics so it's up to the player to be to behave in a certain way and to prove their worth on a pitch when they're playing for a, such a, a club the Chelsea is well guys I'll see you next time in the next video it was a pleasure for me to be with you today